Welcome to the Mixercist. Hey. That song never gets old. How you doing, EB? Good. How you doing, CW? We got the emergency broadcast going, man. Mm -hmm. The doctors are uh, soaped up, scalpeled up. We're ready to go. We're ready to operate. Put me in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put, put me under, right? Put me under. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I read a whole book on surgery on the bus ride over. So I'm good. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It's a, well, it's, it's an emergency session because we just had an announcement from Universal Audio that they have a new, almost like a new platform called UAD Spark. And so we wanted to share that with you guys today. Uh, EB, tell me what you know about it. Ah, uh, I, I know about UAD, but I've never really been a UAD guy just because the hardware. I never uh, I invest in the hardware, I guess. So therefore, right. I couldn't run the plugins until now, apparently, <laughs> until this exactly. year of 2022, which is 20 years of no UAD. And after hearing all my friends using it and going, wow, this stuff's so good, man. I'm going, yeah, you know, I, know. I, just, I never got around to it. So now I'm, pr- I'm pretty stoked about this. How, Me how too. So, so I'm stoked. I mean, I've been a. I, I still have my first UAD device from 20 years ago. My first one I bought in 2003, and it was a PCI card that, I mean, if you were to run it now, it would probably one. It would probably run one plugin. But it. I was so blown away by the sound quality of things like the Poltec and the Neve and the the Fairchild and probably the 1176 is all I had. So I'm stoked about this because people complain a lot that with UAD you're tethered to a hardware device. Even though that hardware device is doing the, some processing, is carrying some CPU load for you. Um, now with the new M1 processors on Apple, which I know even um, I was I saw a quote from Fab Dupont from PureMix talking about how at this point he basically doesn't need a desktop computer to do most of his sessions. I mean, I've got one here the with the yeah. M1 Max in it, and it is let me tell you the fan never comes on, so mm. that there eliminates a ton of problems. That for the same 20 years, you know, we used to have to stuff our CPUs in the closet or when you and I were doing these things, yeah. we had to pray we didn't overload it so that the fan would come in. So anyway, the point being, for years we've been tethered to this platform. So here's the idea behind UAD Spark. It is you don't need to have the device. So you don't even have to buy one. It's not like you can untether and go work away. You don't actually need to buy one. You can get a subscription that would take you into the uad libraries now here's the thing right now there's Mm. two big problems it doesn't go the entire library i have hundreds of uad plugins i have almost all of them and some of my favorite ones aren't represented here yet so the culture vulture isn't there yet the um the manly massive passive and very mu aren't there yet but even the fairchild's not there yet but what they do have are things like i think the best plugin ever made Mm -hmm. is the universal audio la2a oh there you go Second only to maybe the black box, the um, uh, Plugin Alliance Analog Designs black box. Those two plugins, I think, are the best ever. So this, of course, the the one of the first ones they released is the LA-2A collection, the 1176 collection, the Neve EQ, and I assume the preamp, which is a delightful preamp to dirty things up with if you want some saturation. Mm-hmm. Most importantly, the API Vision channel strip, probably one of Let's the best channel is. strips out there. So it would be, yeah, yeah, there it is. You got it. it Right there. And it's, I mean, I love the Acoustica Pink, for example. I didn't love Plugin Alliance's take on this. I even liked the Waves early, the early Waves API EQs. I thought were pretty good, and their their twenty five hundred bus compressor as well, not Mm -hmm. bad. But the UA is definitely a step above. Oh, nice. It's got the saturation, but also the Vision Channel Strip includes probably one of the smartest gates that you can get on a console. I think it's just brilliant. It just works. Let's take a look um, at that one a little bit. A little bit, eh? Let's, sure. Because uh, they've got some some videos here. Let's see what happens if we. Uh, I've never tried this before, but what happens if you go under the hood? I don't know if it'll full screen. Not. Yeah. Well, there you go.
Nice. Very cool, eh? You know? Yeah, uh huh. No, I couldn't hear so, your I couldn't hear your audio there. Just so oh, you know. Oh yeah, because uh, so, I wasn't sending it to you there. That's probably that could why. be. That could be. Yeah, that's exactly why. Now, but now let's uh, let's dig in. So there's a couple of things. If you already here's the best part. If you're already in the ecosystem, if you own any UAD two UAD two yeah. interfaces like the Apollo, the X six, the X eight, the twins. You can go and enlist your plugins and get the native version without paying for a subscription. So if you're a heavily vested user like oh, me, okay. I'm not going to pay for a subscription for plugs I already own. So you would just head over there and it will um, it will activate a local license for you. Again, one slight problem there is that mm -hmm. either you get two authorizations per plugin. Either you authorize to an iLock dongle or to an iLock cloud. So either you have to be... Right online all the time or you have to have your dongle with you I you see. might be able to say let me put one of my licenses on the cloud and put the other one on the dongle and that's maybe smart. have the best of both worlds but i haven't i can't, don't verify or sorry right. don't take my word for it that that will work is that what they're the, not doing yet is the uh the machine based authorization yet then not yet uh, not yet right but this so, is still a huge step i mean they've untied huge it step. from the hardware right so Yep. And the other thing, when I was mentioning the two problems yep. with the plugins, one is that they're not all available yet. So it remains to be seen whether the price point of like, I don't know, is it 20 bucks a month um, or 200 a year? There's some price point publicly available. Don't quote me. Mm -hmm. So it remains to be seen whether that will be for the entire set of plugins once they're as they're gradually released or will they at some point create some tiers? Unknown yet. No comment from UA on that. So... Mm -hmm. I couldn't answer that question. The The other thing that they don't have yet, bizarrely, is silicone native compatibility. So they just released it for yeah. their powered plugins on the latest version of the UA drivers. We now finally have native silicon support. But for these, what they call UADX, the native editions, they're not yet silicon compatible and there's no date announced hmm. strange choice strange decision i probably would have waited but i understand the urgency a lot of the other yeah. vendors are going to subscription-based models yeah. um, there's not really a ton of appetite for tethered hardware or hardware dependent um, setups anymore so i think it's a smart move on their part I, mm -hmm. we're now at the point where computers can run these plugins yes and yet we're not yeah. taking full advantage of the processor so a little bit baffling but Let's, um, can you see yeah. my screen? No, but I'll, we'll get you up there. I just wanted to add that the windows will be coming out, they say, in the fall. So if you're a Windows mm -hmm. person, still a few months more to wait, but it might be worth, you, uh, you know, might be worth if you have a Mac or you can get at, get at one, it might be worth trying them out. If you go out right now and you get the, you know, you, you want to sign up for this and you say, geez, I've already got some UA plugins. Let me at least go get the ones I'm entitled to download. They're going to make you download an app called UA Connect. UA Connect mm -hmm. is an app that they launched with the Volt series. It's different than the UA console or UA mixer or the UA control panel. Uh, so don't confuse it. When you download it, it's supposed to show you all of the plugins that you're licensed to download. Right now, as of this conversation, it's not working. So I was just on some of the Gearspace forums a couple hours ago, and Drew from Universal Audio popped on and said, we're going to be sending out the iLock authorizations for all of our users, but it, it might take a couple of days. So be patient. You're probably going to download this thing, and it's going to tell you it can't find any of your plugins. All good. Don't worry about it too much. Let me see if I'm even able to bring up my... Uh, you know what? I won't bother in case it forces me to log in. Let's look okay. at logic for. Let's look at logic for a minute. Okay. So here I've got some. Uh, I'm going to turn off the. The only one I could download was the tape, the Studer tape machine, the A800. Beautiful plugin. Been using it for years. And I've got a loop here. You know, a Logic drummer loop. So marvelous. Sounds nice as it is. Let's uh, maybe even turn off their compressor and whatever but let's look at the plugin itself so here's the studer first thing you notice if i go and grab my existing universal audio so now in your in your fx bin selectors here you're going to have universal audio if you already own the hardware plus you're going to have a new category called uadx this is where the new plugins are going to live but if we go and grab the vintage studer First thing you'll notice is that there's been a little bit of a GUI update. This looks like 
if you can see this here, this looks more like the Luna, which is Universal Audio's digital audio workstation. It looks like their Luna version. So maybe there's been a cosmetic update. Maybe there's been a sonic update. Maybe there's been an engine update. There could be some optimizations to keep these small. This particular plugin is 54 meg, which is not big for something that does saturation, that does, um, you know, it does all the different tape speeds and stuff. So I'm not sure if there's a, a, an audio compromise here. We'll have to take a good listen and really hear it. And I'm not connected to my native device right now, but you can see the interface is slightly different. Let's open the hood. You'll see that the controls here, they're getting a little, getting a little ancient. The new ones on the right here, are a little bit crisper, look a little bit nicer. Okay, fine. So let's take a listen and see how this one sounds just for giggles. So the vintage one is turned off. The UADX I'm going to kick in, bypass it. Let's have a listen with and without. Let's kick it in. Oh, hang on. Yep. You getting enough volume there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, could come Good. up a little, maybe. Okay, we can try that. Let's see. Without. Darker. A little more staccato. Kick this plug-in in. Let me drive those inputs a little bit harder. I don't know what happened to all my gain. Hang on a second. Something isn't right. Oh, probably one, this. one of those plugins was giving you a bunch, right? One of the ones that you had on. Oh, hey, I bet it was the know. compressor. It was probably the compressor. Let's put that, let's kick that back in. Sorry, guys. Let's do one more listen without. Let me put this back so it doesn't blow your ears off. Let's listen here with no processing. There we go. Listen for the transients and the smear when I kick it in. Here we go. So aside from some delicious saturation, which I'm pushing purposely, like I'm, I'm probably plus 12 dB or more here. You also notice the top ends had a little bit more sizzle. The transients were a little crunchier and it, there was a tiny bit of compression going on that was kind of smoothing out the groove just a touch. Let's listen one more time without. Now with. Especially if you listen to the brushes and the snare, right? You'll hear them go without it a little bit darker. Kick it in. Just comes alive. This is a beautiful plugin. And if you, if you add it to like 10 or 12 tracks across an entire mix, you can really hear the difference. So that's kind of the news fit to print for today. I'm yeah. going to switch off my uh, switch off my DAW here and so I can see you. Well, I think this do. is exciting. This is a big deal. Oh, dude, it's huge, huge deal. Huge. Yeah. And UAD there's in now instruments too available. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's uh, there's a mini Moog did we uh, let's let's check that out for a minute here. Let's too. do it. So we didn't really do the rundown of everything you get that you do get is the uh, LA2A, you get the 1176, you get the API 2500 is it yes bus yep. compressor lexicon 224 that's a beat Woo! pure plate i don't know um mm. it's kind of like their emt 140 but simplified right galaxy tape echo which i believe would be like a roland space echo kind of idea exactly right yep and preamps so there's your api vision which you've told me a number of times like when you get into uad that's probably one of the first strips that you should uh, get because it's so versatile yep. And it does everything really well. There's the Studer that you just demoed, the Neve 1073 preamp, wicked, and instruments. Here's the instruments. So there's this Opal Morphing synthesizer that that I, I listen to this. Let's see if we can hear it for a minute. Check this out.
good. Anyway, you get the idea there. I don't think my internet mm -hmm. likes to, all the streams going on from here. I'm going to have no. to get it. No, 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 no. <laughs> There's I too much video moving around. Soon, dude. I got to get it soon. <laughs> all right, we're going to be doing this. I got to I got to get the bandwidth like like way increase from where it is now, but you know, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll deal with that. But uh but yeah, so we were back at the uh what were we doing there? We were looking at the synthesizers. So that that morphing synthesizer looks wicked, right? Like mm -hmm. Let's see here. Uh, let's get rid of that screen. There we go. So that's the uh, the uh, what is it called? Opal. Weird. See, they, they see how they recycle the names all the time. Opal, like in of course Acoustica. We did the Acoustica Opal with John Orham as an interview. Mm -hmm. Spark itself, right? You got Archeria Spark, which had mm -hmm. synthesizer. You've got Native Instruments Spark, which is a synthesizer. Mm -hmm. Those are at least two sparks that I can think of, and I'm sure that our, our viewers might be able to come up with more. It's funny how these names keep coming back. But anyway, not to take away anything from what you have are doing here, because I think it's phenomenal. The Mini Moog, which I'm sure is great. Hammond B3. So those are your virtual instruments, and the Ravel Grand Piano, which mm -hmm. sounds pretty good for, you know, for a mm -hmm. digital kind of Rappler piano. It's pretty, pretty nice. Yep. They've the gotten job. into the they've gotten into the instruments and if you use Luna they've got into entire analog workflows like including the the summing mixer and um you know the tape at the end like the mastering and the bus compressor all built mm -hmm. into one giant architecture was... it's very very cool what they're doing and it's very easy to get saucy analog vibe with these tools so if you're not in the universal audio universe yet you need to be mm, I think I think one thing I will say, you know, I've got right here across from me, I've got a Universal Audio 610 Solo. It's about a $1,200 tube transformer interface, singles channel. No, no, no frills, probably some printed circuit boards inside, right? Kind of a vintage modern deal. I've got a Neve Shelford here. I've got Grace Designs. I've got, a, I've got uh, some Great River. I've got a bunch of different stuff. Medium quality, high quality, all the, all the way up and down the chain. So I can take a universal audio interface. I've got my X6 right here. And I can AB on two channels. Their idea of a vintage 610, which is like the classic, you know, the Beach Boys Van Halen 1 original, um, the original gangster universal audio console strip. And AB it against my modern, fancy, somewhat cheapish, prosumer if you want to call it that 610 <laughs> solo and you would think well if the vintage is so much better i should be able to a b them and hear something in that 610a or 610b model that really pops i have to tell you they're different for sure but the hardware not high end not vintage though it may be is still wider it still has more atmosphere on the sides you know there's almost no way some people call it 3d nest some people call it fullness some people call it uh fidelity whatever you might want to call it the plug-in always just feels a little bit narrower to me and because they're models of let's say a vintage neve 1073 versus a vintage modern shelford you would think that the plug-in would sound better because it's modeling extremely precious hardware and I have to say, there's still something a little bit not there with mm. some of these plugs. So close that you'd have to, you'd almost have to be looking for trouble to say, well, this isn't the real thing. Like 64 tracks of, you know, a Neve model that sounds damn close. The curves are so right, but they're just a little bit on the narrow side. You'd have to be crazy to take offense to that at 20 bucks a month. But the only thing I'm saying is, you know, if people are asking, do these things, I've never tried UA stuff, does it sound like the real hardware? It's it, Their compressors are divine. I, like I say, LA-2A, probably one of the best plugins ever made. But a lot of the preamps and EQs, they're just lacking a little bit of something. And they're lacking the cohesiveness mm -hmm. of a full-on analog console. So try before you buy. There's a 14-day trial right now. Check it out and see if it's for you. I would totally do that. Yeah, I totally. I tend to agree. And then just try, try before you buy. Of course, I know a lot of our viewers uh, have the Acoustica stuff. So, I mean, in the EQ department, we're pr pretty good. But, the, you know, these compressors, I think, are something, something that we'll probably uh, definitely want to be checking out coming up here. But uh, yep. I think I think that about, you know, 
wraps it up for uh, what we've got to say. Anything, anything else? Or you good? Or? No, I just I, th- I think you and I both were just excited and kind of wanted yeah. to be on this. Almost yeah. like we're news newscasters <laughs> or something. Broadcasters well, yeah. of doom. Broadcasters of doom. <laughs> it ain't a show until. Yeah, well done, sir. Got to do it. That made Gotta me jump. It. Yeah. Well, I, it occurred to me that when I when I uh, put this up for YouTube, it was. Uh, Marked as private, so we're not actually streaming now. But that's, that's cool. So, so, but I got, but I'm recording, so I can upload it. All good. Uh, so you get the best of both worlds, really. A little bit better quality, because uh, I did notice that the uh, the bandwidth was maybe a little challenging at this time of day. So, right. We'll see, see what we can do with that. But uh, other than great that, job, you know, dude. I'm pretty happy with everything. So me too. Uh, we've got a few bugs to iron out, but. The fact that we can find something out, go, hey man, you want to hop on? Yeah, like an hour and a half, good. Yeah, okay, good. And then and then we're up. So that's oh the, yeah. Uh, used to be, used to be, you had to plan two weeks ahead. Yeah. You know, you're going to disappoint all your friends. <laughs> you're basically taking over oh, yeah. a segment of the house. Nobody oh, could like. Yeah. I used to have to turn the fridge off, the air conditioner. Everything had to go off. Yeah. So this is a lot more. Um, this is really sweet. Yeah, a little more casual, right? A little bit less. Uh, you know, yeah. we did it. We we climbed that mountain, right? We got we new did. new valleys to plunge, new lows to find. That's this right. Point. So. <laughs> That's where all the bodies are. <laughs> right <on. laughs> so all right, UAD friends. Spark, man, native UAD now finally available in your laptop workstation thing. or phone. I don't know about a phone yet, but not yet. Maybe you've got a surface, maybe right? Like maybe. Tablet. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> good enough. <laughs> Rock and roll. Uh, make sure you right. like, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful, and uh, we will see you next time on the mixer. On the mixer, sis.